In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will take a look at system of coplanar forces, wherein we will learn about moment of a force, Varignon's theorem, parallelogram law, and laws derived from it. Now, let's see what moment of a force is. When a force is applied to a body, it has the tendency to turn the body about some point. The turning tendency of a force about a point is called the moment of force about that point. The moment of a force can be calculated by finding the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the moment center to the force that is m is equal to f into d. If the moment generated by a force is too high in magnitude, the chances of bending failure of the bar will also increase substantially. The tendency to rotate could be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. SI unit of moment is Newton meter. For moment of a force, we will use the sign convention as anti-clockwise positive and clockwise negative. This is indicated as follows. Now let's learn how to calculate the moment of a force. Consider a rectangular plate ABCD with a force of magnitude F acting on it. Now let's find the moment of F about all the points of the plate that is A, B, C and D. The moment of the force about a point is found by simply multiplying the magnitude of the force with the perpendicular distance to that point. Also, while calculating the moment of a force about a point, that particular point is considered to be fixed. Thus, we observe anti-clockwise moment about point A. Clockwise moments about points B and C and no or zero moment about point D as the force F passes through point D. Consider the seesaw shown. Imagine that a force of 10 newtons acted on a seesaw 2 meters from the pivot. This is how we would work out the moment. Here is an example of balanced moments. A boy weighing 10 newtons at 2 meters from the pivot is balancing another boy weighing 20 newtons at 1 meter from the pivot. The weight forces of the two boys create moments of 20 newton meter that are equal and opposite. So the seesaw is balanced. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Now, we will learn about the principle of moments, also known as Varignon's theorem. It is a very important principle that is often used in conjunction with the principle of transmissibility of forces in order to solve systems of forces that are acting upon and or within a structure. It states that the algebraic sum of moments of two or more forces about any point in their plane is equal to the moment of their resultant about the same point. Hence, the summation of moments of all the forces about a point O is equal to the moment of the resultant about the same point O. Now let's prove Varignon's theorem. Let the forces P and Q act along the lines EX and EY and intersect at E. Let O be any point in the plane of the forces as shown. Through O, draw OB parallel to EX meeting EY at B. Choose the scale so that EB represents Q. On the same scale, cut off EA on EX to represent P. Draw a line parallel to EB from point A and let it cut line OB at point C. Complete the parallelogram EACB. Then EC represents R, the resultant of P and Q. Join OE and OA. Also construct perpendiculars from the point O on the lines EY, EX and EC. Let's call them OO1. OO2 and OO3 respectively. Area of triangle OEC is equal to area of triangle OEB plus area of triangle BEC. But area of triangle BEC is equal to area of triangle EAC. Since each is one half of the area of the parallelogram EACB. Using basic geometric relations, we further reach the relation that Area of triangle OEC is equal to the sum of area of triangle OEB and area of triangle OEA 
since triangles standing on the same base and lying between the same parallels are equal in area. Hence, area of triangle EAC is equal to area of triangle OEA. Using the perpendiculars, we find the areas of the three triangles OEC, OEB and OEA. Therefore, moment of the force represented by EC about O is moment of the force represented by EA about O plus moment of the force represented by EB about O. That is, moment of R is equal to moment of P plus moment of Q about O. Therefore, moment of the resultant R about O is equal to the summation of moments of all forces about point O. Hence, if a system of coplanar forces has a single force as their resultant, then the moment of resultant about any point is equal to the algebraic sum of moments of all forces about the same point. Let's consider the given problem. Consider the cable car shown. The cables connected to the car are attached to a pole as shown. As these cables are always in tension due to the heavy weight of the cable car and the electric transmissions, this tension force acts at the pole. Assume this force to be equal to 100 newtons. We have to find the moment of force of 100 newton about the base point O of the pole. Firstly, we have to find the rectangular components of the force. The component of the force in x direction is F1, which is equal to 70.71 newtons. Similarly, about y direction, F2 is equal to 70.71 newtons. Now, by using Wagner's theorem, moment of 100 newton force about point O is equal to the sum of the moments of the components about point O which is equal to the product of their magnitudes and their perpendicular distances from point O. Thus, the moment of force F about point O is equal to 212.13 newton meters in clockwise sense. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Parallelogram Law of Forces This law can be applied to understand the sport of archery. When an archer pulls the strings of the bow, he applies tensile forces only on the bow strings and none on the arrow. But still, the arrow moves in the forward direction with a high velocity towards the target. This phenomenon can be explained by the parallelogram law of forces. If two forces acting simultaneously on a body at a point are represented in magnitude and direction by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then their resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram, which passes through the point of intersection of the two sides representing the forces. Hence, the arrow is released at such a high velocity towards the target. The parallelogram law of forces enables us to determine the single force called resultant, which can replace the two forces acting at a point with the same effect as that of the two forces. Now let's prove the parallelogram law of forces. Consider the two forces P and Q acting at point O, as shown in figure. The force P can be represented in magnitude and direction by vector OA, while force Q is represented in magnitude and direction by vector OB. Angle between the two forces is alpha. The resultant can be denoted by vector OC as shown. Drop perpendicular from C on OA meeting at point D. Theta is the angle that the resultant force makes with one of the forces, in this case force P. In triangle ACD, cos alpha is equal to AD upon AC. Therefore, AD is equal to AC cos alpha. But AC is equal to Q, that is, AD is equal to Q cos alpha. Similarly, CD is equal to Q sin alpha. Now, if we apply Pythagoras theorem on triangle OCD, we find R square is equal to OA plus AD, the whole square plus CD square. Now, substituting the above derived trigonometric relations, we reach the relation R is equal to square root of P square plus Q square plus 2PQ cos alpha. This is the magnitude of resultant R. Now, let's find the direction of the resultant that is theta. In triangle OCD, tan theta is CD upon OD. That is, theta is equal to tan inverse of Q sin alpha 
upon p plus q cos alpha. Thus, we have proved the parallelogram law of forces. Let's now consider the following problem. In the diagram shown alongside, the force F1 is equal to 8 kN and force F2 is equal to 6 kN are acting on a body at point A. The angle between the two forces is 65 degrees. Then, to get resultant of these forces, parallelogram ABCD is constructed such that AB is equal to 8 units to linear scale and AC is equal to 6 units and alpha is 65 degrees. Then, according to the parallelogram law, the diagonal AD represents the resultant in the direction and magnitude and its inclination is given by angle theta. Thus, the resultant of the forces F1 and F2 on the body is equal to units corresponding to AD in the direction theta to F1. On measuring, we find AD is equal to 11.9 units and theta is 27 degrees. Thus, we have found the resultant R is equal to 11.9 kN at an angle of 27 degrees from the force F1 by graphical construction method. Now, we verify by the formula of parallelogram law of forces. We find the resultant to be equal to 11.856 kN and theta is equal to 27 degrees. Thus, we find that both by graphical construction and formula method, the resultant is the same. Thus, the parallelogram law can be applied on a force system either by graphical construction or by the formula. Now, let's see the various laws derived from the parallelogram law of forces. Referring to the example of the archer, we get the resultant by completing the parallelogram. But if we observe carefully, we can get the resultant force by only constructing triangle ABC. Line AB is drawn to represent F1 and BC to represent F2. Then, AC should represent the resultant of F1 and F2. Then, we have derived triangle law of forces from fundamental law parallelogram law of forces. If two or more than two concurrent forces are acting on a body, two forces at a time can be combined by triangle law of forces and finally resultant of all the forces acting on the body may be obtained. For triangle law, the standard notation to express the triangle is as follows. Consider a huge stone being pulled by four workers with the help of four ropes attached to a single point. All the four ropes will have a tension force acting on them. Then, it is a system of four concurrent forces acting on a body. Let F1 represent the tension of rope 1, F2 the tension in rope 2, and F3 and F4 represent tension forces in ropes 3 and 4 respectively. Let us now find the resultant of the entire system. AB represents F1 and BC represents F2. Hence, according to triangle law of forces, AC represents the resultant of F1 and F2, say R1. If CD is drawn to represent F3, then from triangle law of forces, AD represents the resultant of R1 and F3. In other words, AD represents the resultant of F1 F2 and F3. Let it be called as R2. On the same logic, it can be extended to say that AE represents the resultant of F1, F2, F3 and F4 if DE represents F4. Thus, resultant R is represented by the closing line of the polygon ABCDE in the direction AE. Hence, we observe that the stone will move in the direction of the resultant of the system. Thus, we have derived polygon law of forces. If a number of concurrent forces acting simultaneously on a body are represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a polygon, taken in an order, the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the closing side of the polygon, taken from the first point to the last point. Consider the same example if the forces are applied in such a way that when the polygon is drawn, the start point and the end point are the same. Then the resultant of the system would be zero. That is, no resultant would be acting on the system. Hence, the stone will not move. That is, the system would be in a state of equilibrium. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. The turning tendency of a force about a point 
is called the moment of force about that point. The moment of a force can be calculated by finding the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the moment center to the force. The SI unit of moment is Newton meter. Next, we learned about the Varignan's theorem and then saw its proof. Varignan's theorem states that the algebraic sum of the moments of two or more forces about any point in their plane is equal to the moment of their resultant about the same point. Then we learned about the parallelogram law of forces. It states that if two forces acting simultaneously on a body at a point are represented in magnitude and direction by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram, which passes through the point of intersection of the two sides representing the forces. Archery is a sport where this law can be applied. Then we saw the proof of the parallelogram law. Then we learned about the laws derived from the parallelogram law. Triangle law states that if two forces acting on a body are represented one after the other by the sides of a triangle, their resultant is represented by the closing side of the triangle taken from the first point to the last point. Polygon law states that if a number of concurrent forces acting simultaneously on a body are represented in magnitude and direction by the sides of a polygon taken in an order, then the resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the closing side of the polygon taken from the first point to the last point.